everyone, my name is Danielle and welcome to another episode of Board Game Bakes. This week we're focusing on Chai, which is produced by Steve Games. In this game, you work as a tea master and you're trying to collect ingredients to get the best teas and make your customers happy because in the end, most games you want the points. But when I saw this game on Instagram, I was instantly in love. All the components are so beautiful and I just knew that I really, really wanted to bake it. And I loved playing it too, so it was definitely a win-win. But if you're making a dessert about chai, it just makes sense to do chai. So in America, chai tea, I think it's called masala chai. So it's a spice tea, and we're going to use that to make a masala chai cake and American buttercream. And then we're going to also make a black tea jello to originally to go on top. You'll see why that didn't exactly work. But instead, we'll make some cute black tea jello jigglers to have with your cake. You've got a lot of work to do. Let's get started. As you may be aware, baking does not always go as planned. Thankfully, most of my crazy ideas usually work, but this time, I don't think I thought it through. Here's how I make a fun black tea jello to have with your cake. It was originally intended to go on the cake, but you'll see what happened. Start by boiling two cups of water and adding it to one tablespoon of black tea. Let it seep for 10 minutes, then strain and cool it a bit before continuing. Mix two packets of gelatin into half a cup of the tea mixture and let it bloom for about three minutes. While it's blooming, you can heat up the remaining tea until it starts boiling. Remove it from the heat and add in the gelatin mixture and four tablespoons of granulated sugar. Once the sugar and gelatin have dissolved, pour it into a baking dish and let it chill for three to four hours in the fridge. Let's see how much tea we can fit into a single dessert. We'll start with a tasty masala chai cake. This should taste close to what Americans call chai tea. First step is to infuse the butter, which is a trick I picked up when doing my rubos tea cake. You can infuse the butter for the cake and your frosting at the same time. Melt two sticks of butter over low heat. Once it's just liquid, add one and a half tablespoons of black tea and mix it. Pour this mixture into a container and let it sit in the fridge for at least a few hours or overnight. A little bit before you're ready to bake your cake, remelt your butter and strain it to get out the tea. You need a half a stick or two ounces for the cake and you'll put the rest into your icing, which is about equivalent of one stick left over because some of it gets sucked into the tea. Time to make our cake. You'll need a spherical cake pan, or you can lay your cake and shape it afterwards. Mix three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar and the infused butter in a mixing bowl until smooth. While that's mixing, add a half teaspoon of salt, an eighth a teaspoon black pepper, one half teaspoons baking powder, a half teaspoon baking soda, three teaspoons of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of cloves, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and add all of that to one and three quarters cup of flour and give it a mix. Oof. You can also add cardamom, but I may have misread labels in my house and didn't actually have any on hand. Oops. Back to the mixer. Add two large eggs, one at a time, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a quarter cup of vegetable oil. Once that's homogenous, Alternate adding the dry ingredients and one cup of whole milk with a dry, wet, dry, wet, dry pattern. Pour the batter into the spherical pans that have been rubbed with shortening. You should have enough to fill one pan and some in the other. Be careful because the cooking times will be different. Cook at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 15 minutes, which has a large range because there's different amounts of batter in each pan. Make sure you let the cakes cool completely before decorating. On to the icing. I had fun coming up with this frosting by giving an American buttercream a chai twist. Mix your infused butter and one stick of unsalted butter until smooth. Add in four cups of powdered sugar and mix that until it's nice and smooth as well. To make the spices mix more evenly, you can mix three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ginger, an eighth a teaspoon of cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of salt in a small bowl first. Add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract and then your spice mixture and mix that until it's nice and smooth. If you want it to be a little easier to spread, you could add milk or heavy cream, one tablespoon at a time until you get the right texture. Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. While you're here, make sure you subscribe for new videos every Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST. Thanks. When you think of a cozy cup of tea, it has to at least start with a little steam coming off the top, right? So you could create a steam illusion by making rice paper wisps. Take a piece of rice paper and submerge it in warm water. You could try adding some white food gel to make it even smokier. Keep it in the water until it's completely bendable. Drape it over whatever shape you want to create and let it dry overnight. 
and you'll have your steam. Time to put our cake together. Use your smaller cake to make the full half of the sphere into a larger cup. Cut the large cape in half after trimming off the top and the bottom. And you want to make it so that the smaller cake is able to fit into that middle layer. We're going with an upside down approach to icing. I'm not sure if there's a better approach, but this one made the most sense to me. Don't put icing on your board because you don't want the cake to stick. Place the top layer upside down the cutting board and ice the top of that. Which will be the one closest to the sky. Put on the second layer and repeat. Make sure you've trimmed the bottom of your sphere so this way it'll rest once you flip it over onto the plate. And you want to cover the whole cake with a layer of frosting and place it in the fridge to harden. To repair the fondant, dye half a batch of the marshmallow fondant, or your preferred fondant, a clay brown color. You want to put a little bit aside to make it a lighter brown color for some details. And we're going to rip off a little bit of that to make the handle. Once you have those details set aside, you want to roll out the remainder of the fondant so it's a quarter of an inch thick. Take your cake out of the fridge and roll the fondant over it. Roll out a lighter shade of the brown fondant and you want to cut that into strips and add them onto your cake. If they're not tacky enough to stick, you could always put a little water on the back and that'll help them stick together. Now it's time for the most stressful part, flipping it over. Put a dab of frosting on the cake board and place it on the bottom of the cup. Then flip! Here's where things went wrong. I tried to put the gel in a nice little circle on top of the cake to hopefully make it look like an actual cup of tea. But jello is slippery, so how is my fondant supposed to stick? In hindsight, it was a silly idea, but it sounded like a lot of fun <laughs> when I was playing it out. The gel broke and slipped and made a royal mess. Oh well, plan B. But wait, we can't forget the tea jello. We're not gonna waste that. It's still a fun treat and a way to use tea. Make jello as seen before, but instead of trying to put on the cake, Use a cute cookie cutter to make it a tea time jello jiggler. Woo! Nailed it! Ice the top of the cake and roll the fondant sides over a fondant tube and pray it sticks together, which I imagine would be a lot easier if there wasn't some jello stuck in it. You can use black edible marker to add the lines and shadows on the cup for some finishing touches and put extra icing swirls on top to make it look like a swirling cup of tea. Add on your rice paper as one chunk or break into smaller pieces for more wisps. Add them on your cake and you're good to go! Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. I hope you enjoyed that even though things didn't go perfectly as planned, it all came together to make a fun dessert that is terrific. Yeah. Terrific? They like doing that, Chai. <laughs> what's your favorite type of tea? Let me know in the comments down below. I kind of like green tea, but what's your favorite? And if you have a second, share this with your friends so this way the word can get out about Board Game Bakes. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye! Trying to brew the best, brew the uh, brew the best tea. Let's try this again. So this way you're able to bake. Oh, even though things didn't really go perfectly.